<coughs> Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh um, I hope you guys in a good condition My name is Muhammad Amidin Arimi bin Asari Today I'm going to present about um, RIPS, AP or PA and Oblique Projection Okay, first We jump into the uh, RIP PA first For the projection um, This is an AP PA ribs why because um there is magnification of the heart you can see the heart is magnified and then the vertebral bodies are demonstrated with without distortion the vertebral bodies are, de are demonstrated without distortion then the spinous process is visualized at the inferior aspect of its vertebral body the spinous process is inferior part you can see the spinous process is at the inferior part and the last one, the lung field is clear of the scapula. You see the, the lung field is clear of the scapula. We can we can um, see the scapula very well. Okay, next. For the position. <coughs> mm, there is sign of body rotation of the patient because the distance of vertebral column to the sternal end. The, the vertebral column to the sternal end um, of the clavicle are equal. Sternal end of the clavicle are equal with the body and sternal end equal. Next, there is sign of tilted forward because the distance between the top of clavicle and the apex of lung is exceeding above 2.5. So as we can see or okay, so we can measure um, the top of clavicle and the apex of lung. It is exceeding above 2.5 cm. So therefore it is tilted forward. Um, so the correction for that um, tilted forward is um, patient says must in contact with Baki to avoid any signs of tilted um, or in other words um, patient's body must lay backward next for the alignment um, the alignment between x ray tube with patient is it is cannot be determined because there are no four sides of collimation. Um, next for the alignment between X ray tube with cassette, it is also the same which is uh, no uh, which cannot be determined because there is no four sides of collimation. Meanwhile, for the cassette alignment between cassette with patient, it is correct because the left and right side is balanced. The left and right side, if we divide it into half, the left and right side is equal. Also, the top and inferior and um, superior part also um, balanced. The centering point for this radiograph cannot be determined because there is no force of collimation. Because you can see there is no force of collimation in the image. The centering point for this projection should be 3 or 4 inches before the glenoid notch. We can see the jiggle notch is 3 to 4 inches below the jiggle notch. Next, for the collimation. At the superior part, the structure that should be included uh, for PA rib, I'm sorry, this is, should be PA, is first rib to ninth procedural ribs and lung fields. First to ninth and then the lung fields should be clearly visible. Therefore, it is, we can say to say it is um, uh, PA rib. For the inferior part, heart, 9 to 12 ribs are visualized. And as for the lateral part, the clavicle and the sternoclavicular joint should be uh, can be seen in the image. Next, for the exposure factors, as for the contrast, um, uh, we can see that the thin structure, which is the bony critical outline of the anterior rib, bony cortical outline of the anterior rib can be seen clearly also the thick structure of the bony cortical outline which is the posterior rib also can be seen clearly so you can see the thick and the thin can be seen clearly that's why the, the contrast is adequate uh, and no changes of KVP are necessary in this projection as for the density we can see clearly the thin structure which is the bony trabecular pattern of anterior rib also, the thick structure, which is the bony trabecular pattern of posterior rib, also can be seen clearly. Therefore, density is also adequate and no changes of MAS are required. Um, for this projection, there are no changes of exposure factors are needed. Next, we jump into the marker. 
as we can see in the image there is no evidence of plumber marker it should be a lead marker at the bottom left side of the body uh, I'm sorry at um, the top the top left side of the body in a correct annotation the, um, so that the marker is not overlapping with the region of interest although my video is on the image but there is still no marker behind it as for the aesthetic value it is safe to say that the field use is optimum which is 3543 and it is used to visualize all the structures in the um, projection the artifact is not superimposed with the ROI there is there is there's an artifact which is a physical artifact visible in the image we can see that there are some scratches in the image but that they are not so effect that is not so give then not giving any effect on the image as for the name there is no evidence of the patient's name um, but there should be patient identification on the film to ensure that the extra image is from the correct patient um, also my image uh, my video is overlapping with the image but still there is no evidence of name or patient identification as for the conclusion the radiograph is unacceptable because there is slightly rotation but the region of interest still, still can be seen the elements is acceptable because the region of interest is not being cut off even it has no force of collimation the exposure factor is adequate but this radiograph with a film doesn't have a plumb marker and it has artifact the outlet paper overlap with the region of interest and the name of the patient patient patient's identification isn't in profile therefore we can't accept this read this image next we jump to the red oblique as for the projection um, we, we can see clearly that this is um, a right posterior rib RPO because right side of the rib is closer to IR and we can see the anterior ribs are located at the lateral edge and have a greater detail axillary ribs are demonstrated without superimposition and, and are located in the center of the exposure field and also the soft tissues on the right side is bigger than the other side you can see the soft tissues is bigger than the left side next for the position Cor correct obliquity can be determined by evaluating the position of the sternum you can see the sternum over here True obliquity can be obtained by making sure the inferior sternum is positioned halfway between the vertebral column and the anterior ribs. For this radiograph, it is safe to say that this is an in a correct obliquity because the uh, the inferior sternum is positioned halfway between the vertebral column and the anterior ribs. Next, for the alignment. The alignment between the x-ray tube uh, with patient is cannot be determined because there are no four sides of collimation and also the x-ray uh, the, the alignment between x-ray tube with cassette also cannot be determined because um, the absence of the collimation um, as for the alignment between cassette and with patient it is correct because the left and right side is balanced if we divide it we can see clearly that the left and right side is balance the centering point for this radiograph cannot be determined because there is no four sides of collimation you can see you may see clearly that there is no four sides of collimation therefore the centering point cannot be determined but the centering point for this projection is at midway between the little margin of ribs and spine little margin of ribs and spine so therefore it should be around right here okay next as for the collimation um, at the superior part, the structure that should be included are first rib to tenth rib uh, can be seen clearly. Also, uh, for the inferior part, ribs twelve to approximately eight may be seen below the diaphragm. You can see the diaphragm below. We can see the twelve ribs or to the eight ribs. Uh, for lateral part, the the structure should be included are rib margin. Exposure factors. As for the contrast, um, we can see clearly the thick structure, which is the bony cortical outline of the anterior ribs, can be seen. Also, the thick structure of the bony cortical outline of posterior rib also can be seen clearly in the image. 
Therefore, the contrast is adequate and no changes of KVP are required in this image. As for the density, the thin structure which is the bony trabecular pattern of anterior ribs can be seen clearly. Also, the thick structure of bony trabecular pattern of posterior ribs also can be seen clearly in this image. Therefore, the density is adequate. Um, so, in this image, no changes of exposure factors are needed. Next, for the marker, there is evidence of digital marker at the correct side of the body and in a correct annotation, which is right here. It is correct. Next, for the aesthetic value, it is safe to say that the film used is optimum, which is 3543 cm, and it is set on leg wide. The artifact is not superimposed with the ROI. There is no artifact seen in the radiograph. As we can see, it is clear. As for the name or patient identification, there is no evidence of patient identification. Although my image is overlapping with the, um, Im uh, although my video is overlapping with the image, there is still no evidence of pa patient identification. But there should be patient certification on the film to ensure that the film actually is from the correct patient. Before the conclusion. The radiograph is unacceptable because there is slightly irritation what the region of the interest still can be seen. Um, the alignment is acceptable because the region of interest is not being cut off even if it has no forces of collimation. The exposure factors is adequate. <coughs> <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the, the exposure factor is adequate but the radi this radiographic film has a di digital marker. And it doesn't has artifacts that overlap with the region of interest, but the patient or patient the name of patient identification is in profile. <laughs> um, that's all for me. Thank you.